Hey everyone, Kyle here. Welcome to topic two of my Learn Bidding and Bridge series, The Role of Responder. Um, should be some fun stuff today. Let's hop right into it. So, um, you might recognize these slides from the last video because they're my recap slides of the lesson. Um, so essentially last time we talked about things like evaluating the shape and strength of your hand, which are really the goals of your first and second rebid when you open the bidding. You're trying to describe um, where your long suits are, if you have any, or if you're balanced, if you don't, which is still telling you something about your shape. Um, and then you're also, with your first two bids, um, which we'll get into a little bit more today, maybe with um, thinking about from the other side of the table, from your partner's hand, um, how to evaluate the strength of your hand, um, which we've talked about with balanced hand, but we haven't really gotten into a ton of detail with the unbalanced hands. Um, so we talked about how to think about balanced versus unbalanced, how to plan your rebids, um, we talked about minimum length requirements for different bids and kind of where the deviations are, um, particularly for the balanced hands, um, particularly like these 12 to 14 or 18 to 19 balanced hands, which often get stuck in the bidding. Um, we use this awesome diagram um, from Professor Shusett Gates at Austin College, um, which really helps conceptualize a hand. So first you determine, do you have an opening hand? Yes, no. Um, then you should have to think about the shape of your hand. So if it's unbalanced, you open your lug suit, uh, particularly five card suits if you can. Um, and we open the higher ranking of two e of equals. Um, if you don't have a five card suit, you open your you open a four card suit, um, and you still open on the higher of equals. Um, remember, you're only allowed to open a four card suit if it's clubs or diamonds, because um, hearts and spades require five. Um, on the other side of the bracket, we have our balanced hands. Um, Fifteen to seventeen and twenty to twenty one are defined. Um, but if you're stuck, you think of it, you open one of a suit, like a ba unbalanced hand, so you put, you conceptually put on your thinking cap and say, okay, for for argument's sake, if this hand was unbalanced, what would I open it? So we, we, have, we have that five-card major requirement. Um, if you don't have a five-card major, open a five-card minor. If you don't have a five-card minor, open your longer minor. Sometimes we're stuck with equal length. Um, again, open the higher of equals if you can. Um, the one exception to that is equal length in the minors when you're 3-3 three, three, because you don't really have a real suit in either minor, so you can just open the lowest one to, uh, to save room. Um, so that's how you think about opening the bidding. Um, we talked a little bit about rebids, um, which we talked about here. We talked about this priority of bidding your lower ranking suits. Before sh and if you can't do that, you can rebid um, your initial suit to show extra length. Um, but this, but these priorities change because a partner likes our initial offering. Um, often we stick with it. Um, and we'll get into a little bit more to that today, maybe. Um, then balance hands, we talked about, you often rebid, you often rebid no trump, um, if you're stuck. Um, um, but this is also without support. So like ignoring point one, so we, we've been thinking about, unconsciously we've been thinking about um, our plan rebids, we've been assuming partner doesn't like our first suit. So, you know, we've been no trump if partner doesn't like your suits. Um, then we talked about this idea that we have these opening bids, one no and two no for different point ranges. Um, and the line and open, open a suit and rebid no trump shows the point range directly below the opening point range for you to do that because they can't both be the same. They show different hand types. So lying and bidding one of a suit and rebidding no trump shows the touching point range below if you were to have opened that um, initially. Um, so on today's agenda, so there's kind of, there's three big topics in covering responding. So today we're gonna cover topic one, which is responding to one of a minor, uh, which is your club and diamond openings. Um, it's an interesting topic. Um, so a club and diamond, you have the most room essentially to communicate over so um, that's kind of where the bread and butter is of learning how to respond, is think about a club and a diamond. Um, responding to a heart and a spade is interesting. Um, it takes the same concepts as over a club and a diamond, uh, but it's a little more condensed. Um, and the way we think about this stil stylistically has actually changed a lot more in the recent 20 years of bridge. Um, ideology for how to respond to a heart and a spade has changed a lot. Um, and then we'll get to responding to no Trump um, which if you ever buy any bridge book like Audrey Grant's um, Beginner Bridge series or um, there's a stack classic like Club series, American Contract Bridge League book that you may own. Those are common beginner books. Um, if you're looking for recommendations, um, those are probably fine. Like just there's no real great standard text. Um, or come to my YouTube channel. Um, but 
tell your friends. Um, but you know, if you're look, I know a lot of people like to actually read like a full condensed bridge book when they're learning and, and like have a little reference guide. And if you're looking for something, those are great stuff. I can't argue that. Um, there's no great modern bridge guide that I have super high recommendations for. Um, anyway, off topic. So responding to OneNote, TwoNote, um, we talked about when you open OneNote, TwoNote, you don't really have a rebid priority. We kind of skipped over that. Um, that's because we can play um, some fancy stuff over OneNote, TwoNote that isn't necessarily intuitive. So we're saving that for last because OneNote, TwoNote are kind of an introduction um, to a bridge concept known as conventional bidding. Um, which is fun, which is a little scary at first, but it's a lot of fun. Um, so we're going to talk about we're going to talk about how to think about responding to to a club and a diamond. Then we're going to get into responding to a hardened spade. I will introduce, I guess, the two different styles of responding um, to a major, uh, and then future topics. Um, this was designed for a lesson I gave to some beginners recently, but I'm still refining it for this YouTube series. Um, that's why it says topic for next week. Um, but future topics are going to be, you know, the final two rules of bidding, which are overcall and advancer. Um, and then at the end of the series, I am going to have a one little video on on kind of carding and card play. Um, which is common leads and common attitude signals. And for my more, you know, beginner intermediate players that are starting to dive into more conventions after seeing the one no response um, lecture kind of thing, um, we will talk about more like common conventions and fun stuff they can play. Um, so lots of future fun topics in store. Um, so what is Responder? So Responder is partner of OpenUp. So remember, oh, partner is open the bidding. Um, and they have shown a hand that's stronger than average, right? So they have not a really weak hand. Um, so our job as responder is not to describe our hand. You know, that's par partner's job is to describe their hand. Um, we call this the concept of captaincy. Like you both can't be screaming at each other and fighting for control. So, you know, bidding is a conversation. It's a language to communicate back and forth. Um, you know, describing your hand and finding the best contract and all that jazz um, but you need some ground rules, and it turns out the best way to think about responder is not about, like, you're not describing your own hands, you're being support. Like, you're, the job of responder is, um, you, know, you know, part of being a good partner is listening to partner. And and, and um, really, um, in, in any partnership, your, your job should be to support others in your partnership. It, it, it should be, uh, a successful partnership usually isn't too successful by focusing on yourself. Um, so you can think about responder's role is partner has taken this leap forward. Um, they they bravely stepped forward with um, an above average hand and um, taken take are taking some risk here um, by coming into the auction um, and, and trying to help pave the path forward. And as a responder, we're just here to to support partner. We we want to we want to see partner succeed. We succeed together. We win together by working together. Um, I work for Allstate. One of our principles is we win together. So um, they'll be happy to see that applies to Bridge too. Um, so anyway, um, so our job is to help partners describe our hand. So when we think about responding bidding, you know, we said we have to have an above average hand. Average is 10 points. We talked about high points last lesson. We say that, um, you know, you need slightly above average to open the bidding. But that's not true with responding. So responding... Um, you, you want to have about an average, you and partner together, you want to have at least 20 points, which is half the deck. So if you have, ideally, if on average, theoretically, you have half the deck, um, it's safe to bid and you can, and you probably have the right to the contract because you have more points than your opponents. And so we say on average, you need to have half the deck to, um, respond to partner. Um, so that turns out to be a minimum of about six points. Um, and that's because when partner opens a harder spade, you know, their minimum is 12, but their average is actually higher. Um, if you think about, if you're like a mathematician, on um, this sort of a base rules principle, conditional that partner has an opening hand, um, their average strength is actually higher because we can eliminate the 11, the zero to 11 point hands that are pretty common. Um, so partner's average strength, you know, tends to be about 13, you know, somewhere in the 12 to 14 range. Um, and so we, we 12 to 14, 12 to 15, you know, it anchors lower. It's, um, if, if you think of like the bell curve, like, um, the, the bulk of hands are in that like minimum opening range, but we say an average partner's average is, is good enough that you need only six or more points to respond. So even though partner promises a minimum of 12, 
Um, we're assuming they're a point or two heavier than that on average, and so we can respond to six. That's usually at least half the deck. So we think about our hands in these different ranges, right? So bust is a hand that, <clears throat> on average, it's not our hand, and so we're a bust hand. So we say these are not good enough to respond. Um, then we get into the simple responses. You often hear this as constructive because um, you know you have some values that are useful to partner. So we say this is six to nine. Sometimes you'll see this six to ten. Um, it depends on context of of kind of what game, what what scoring bonuses you're going after. Um, but we say a constructive hand is six or more. So, can, so in contrast to a bust hand, a constructive or better hand is a hand that has values. Um, and then we get to an invitational hand. Uh, I'm going to skip over invitational. Um, let's think about game forcing hands first. So a game forcing hand is we have this scoring bonus. Um, if you and partner have on average 25 points or more, um, 25 to 28, um, depending on what strain you're looking for for your contract, we say you're worth um, the game bonus. Um, so if you have 25 or 26 points, you can often make the game bonus, which is a contract of three no trump, okay, um, four spades, four hearts, or um, five diamonds, or five clubs. So these are the game bonus contracts. Um, so that's, if you've been paying attention, that's three no three level for no trump, four level for a major suit, hearts and spades, and the five level for a minor suit. Um, we focus on majors and no trump, and for that we say you need about 25 points per game. For a minor, maybe we say you need like 27. It's a little, that number is a little fudgety. Um, it's more about fit and stuff. For minor suits, when you get to five level contracts or higher, fit is a lot more important. Um, so we say, in general, you need about 25 points per game. Um, so partner opens the hand, um, uh, you know, they have 12 or more points. Um, on average, we assume at least one point higher conservatively. So we often say, you know, an opening hand across an opening hand is about 25 points or a game force, in quotes. So that means you should usually end up in a game contract. So we say if you have an opening hand across an opening hand, we call that the game forcing range. So these are hands focused on getting to that scoring bonus because it's either there or really freaking close. Um, and so what about the hands in the middle between simple response and game forcing? So invitational is kind of if partner has a maximum for their bids, um, we, we have game. But if partner's at the minimum end of their range, we don't have game. So invitational is because partner is variable between some point ranges for their bids <clears throat> like let's say partner opens a 15 to 17 no trump so if you have 10 points um that's actually a game course because 15 across 10 is game forcing um if you have like nine points nine points is invitational because across 15 you don't have 25 points but if across 16 or 17 you do um you'll notice that nine points is lower than invite so you know these these ranges changes depending on the strength of the amount of strength partner has shown um but in general, when partner opens one of a suit, these are kind of the point ranges. So these are what I'm, I'm essentially teaching you. So you can think of a constructive, simple, simple positive, game force, really good hand, forcing to that game bonus, invitational, um, a hand that's close to the game bonus, but might not be, actually be there. And bust is everything else. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, next concept I want to introduce is what's known as the forcing versus non-forcing bid. Um, so a forcing bid is what it sounds like. Um, partner can't pass it. They have to, they have to make at least one more bid. Um, so there's two types of forcing bids. There's games that are forcing to, um, a game contract, like, you know, partner, if partner is, you know, in this range of hand, we have some bids that tell partner we're in that range and that you can't pass till we get to a scoring bonus. Uh, and then we have the more common type of forcing bid, which is partners to bid at least once more. Um, if your bid is not forcing, if your, if your bid is not one of these forcing things, it's called a not forcing bid. Um, and partner doesn't have to bid again to it. So we'll keep this concept in mind. Uh, it'll start to make more sense as we look at different types of responses partner can give. Um, so here are some simple examples of forcing responses. So, or simple, or these aren't actually, actually these aren't actually forcing responses. Um, let's see, we're fixing the presentation. So here are some, some simple examples of responses. We're going to think about if each one is forcing or non-forcing. So we have a club, new suit, my partner. We have, I open a suit, partner raises my suit. We have, I open a suit, 
partner bids no trump. And then if I open a suit, partner bids a new suit, but it's at the two level instead of the one level. So we call we call these simple new suits because you're not taking up you're not jumping. Like a club two hearts um is different from a heart to a spade two hearts because you could have bid one heart over a club, um, but you have to bid you can't bid a heart over a spade. So it's about like room sometimes. Um, do I explain? So here's here's what what's forcing versus non-forcing. So think about it for a sec. Which of um, two of these are non-forcing? Two of these are forcing. And I'll give you a sec to think about um, can, if you have a guess, like what's forcing, what's non-forcing. I know th this might not have occurred to you when you when if you see these sequences out on the open, but like what what do you think needs to be forcing? What do you think isn't forcing? So I'll give you a sec to think about that. Okay, you have a sec to think about that. You can pause me if you need to. More time. Uh, but essentially, um, new suits, um, particularly new suits at the one level, are forcing. Um, because there's a lot of hands with a new suit, right? A new suit um, could be a really minimal hand. It could be a really big hand. Um, you need room to find that fit. Um, so we say simple new suits are actually just forcing. Um, and this is a simple, this is just the standard one round force. So what about open a suit and partner raises a suit? Um, now this bid is not forcing um, because you found a trump fit. Um, and additionally, um, we'll, we'll see how you show different levels of strength with this raise. Um, but it turns out that if you raise a suit, that bid doesn't need to be forcing. What about a natural no trump rebid over like a suit? So natural natural no trump rebids are also not forcing. Um, but you know, just because a bid is not forcing doesn't mean the bidding has to stop. Um, just like for both these auctions, sometimes partner has a second bid. So like, for example, we talked about, um, last time about unbalanced hands. So let's say you have five spades and four diamonds in an opening hand. Um, if partner bids unnatural, like one no to our opening bid, um, obviously you're still going to want to show your secondary suit, um, because you're unbalanced and you might just because partner doesn't have. Uh, a clear suit to show doesn't mean that you don't have a fit. So, um, you know, these aren't, these don't end their auction necessarily just because they're not forcing. If you have a reason to bid, you can still make another bid. Um, and then we have the special auction of a spade two hearts. This is a concept known as the two over one game force, um, at least in what I'm teaching you. Um, some people do play, so a, so a two over one bid, um, which is an, a simple new suit at the two level to a one level opening, um, we in the modern style, we play this as showing game forcing values versus just forcing one round. Um, you'll hear this distinction in the one major um, responding lesson because um, essentially this is a stylistic change um, over the last twenty years. Um, the old style is to play the, is to play a simple new suit at the two level, forcing one round. The modern style is to play it as showing these game forcing values, um, and there are further implications that are probably more for the intermediate plus player. Um, that I could talk about at some point in the future lesson. Um, but all you need to know is that the modern style is that this shows extra values. And um, when it comes up, we'll talk about it in more detail. So don't worry about it for now. Um, so this is just your little preview. So what about what the hell about shape? Like I talked about shape um, the entirety of last lesson. I was just about shape, shape, shape. Your points, where they are, don't matter. Um, how come I haven't mentioned shape yet? I'm talking about you know forcing bids and supporting partner, and different point ranges, and what about shape? Um, so, again, we're in the support role. Um, support role, it's not about necessarily showing your shape, it's about helping partners show their shape. And we'll see that as we start to think about our simple responses, because um, it's actually kind of interesting. Um, so here are some of our standard bread and butter um, sequences that we're going to learn today. Um, damn it, this got undone again. Okay. So we have opening bid. Um, we're going to assume a diamond for all these opening bids. So we're going to think about what range of strength does this show, and is it forcing or not forcing? So we have we have a few categories. We have a diamond, simple new suit. We have a diamond, pass. We have diamond, raise diamonds. We have a diamond, bid no trump. So we're going to think about each of these. Um, do I show this in the next slide? I show this a few slides down. So. Think about it if you want. It's a good exercise to stop and try to guess what these all mean. Um, and maybe it'll make more sense um, at the end of the lesson. Um, essentially, by the end of this lesson, you'll know how all these work. Uh, so it should be great. Um, so we have this fun little priority chart I'm going to spend a little time on. 
Um, we essentially have five basic priorities when we respond on what we're going to bid. So this is kind of, this is equivalent to that, to the, to the true Scott Gates diagram. Um, except I didn't make it a chart. Maybe I'll make it a chart. Um, when I, when I publish these materials or if I refilm this video, um, at some point in the future. Um, but essentially a little chart this time is, is starting with these different point ranges of bus through game force. Um, and what we're going to do with each different range kind of is kind of like, our plan. So with a bad hand, priority one is to pass. If we don't have six points, we pass. Um, priority two is about responding with a new suit at the one level, particularly in this. Is, and this is gonna be a little weird in hearts and spades. So if we have hearts and spades. Um, these are suits that it's hard for partner to bid because if partner opens a club or a diamond, it's a higher ranking suit. Remember, um, in the first lesson, I said you can't open or can't really rebid higher ranking suits because they take up too much room. So our priority as responder is to introduce new higher ranking suits. Um, and with responder, we don't need five or more cards to respond like we do to open one of a major. Um, responding, all responses are four or more cards, um, at least at the one level. At the two level, they're five or more cards. So one level, four or more cards, five level, or two level, mostly five or more. That's actually not true. Um, usually four more cards to respond as responder, and there are situations where you want a fifth card. Um, so we'll get into that. So our first priority, our first real priority besides pass, is to bid um, one of these higher-ranking cards or spade suits, bid one major. Um, and you're always going to bid the longer if equal, just like um, just like same principles opening. We open we open higher of equals. So if you're if you're equal in two, um, we tend to open. Actually, no, this is a lie. Um, or no, actually, shoot. Oh, sorry. Ignore all that. I got that wrong. So over a diamond, you. This is actually reverse of of what we learned last time. So we talked about opening the bidding. You bid the higher of equals. Responding, unless you're five five, um, if equal length, you actually tend to bid the lower one, um, because the idea is you're saving space at the one level for partner, um, to bid their suit. So if it goes a club, a heart, um, you've saved room for partner to bid a spade. Whereas if I go a spade, a heart, or if it goes a club, a spade, if I'm four four and spades and hearts. Um, partner can't bid one heart over a spade. They have to bid two hearts, and two hearts is a problem where you bid over a diamond. Um, so, I'm sorry, I probably started with a club. So, a club of heart, a club of heart openers are easy spade rebid. A club of spade opener cannot bid two hearts most of the time. So, if you're 4 4, you actually open, um, you respond the lower of equals. Um, if you're 5 5, you actually might consider responding the higher. In fact, you, you typically do. Um, just because you don't expect part of support, um, damn that my explanation sucked there. I'm sorry. Um, don't worry about equal length for now. Is what I, is what I'll say. Um, when you're practicing, um, when we when we practice and we do some examples, the equal length principle will hopefully get a little more clear. You don't actually need to know that super well. Beginning. I apologize for that. I'm not gonna. Could maybe cut this out of this video if I was a little better at editing, but um, maybe when I get better at it. Um, so anyway, um, the general rule is if you're if you're four four, open the lower one. If you're five five, open the higher one. Um, let's change that. Always bid the longer if equal if equal four four length. Bid the lower one. If five five bit higher, yeah. Sorry about that. Um, I you know I taught these slides from the beginners and I missed little errors like that. And you know I'm didn't prep a, I didn't prep a ton to you know teach this lesson. Um, so let's reset. Let's teach them the beginning. So bust hands pass. Um, with a four card major, tend to bid the longer one. If you're equal four four, you're gonna bid the lower one because because if you save room for that one spade rebid, don't worry too much about that. Uh, if you're five five, bid the higher one like normal. So this this actual four four thing is another weird exception. Just like if you're three three in the minors, you open the lower one. Um, it's the exception, not the rule. Um, that's the best way to conceptualize it. So hopefully that clears that up. Um, if you don't have four card major, um, your third priority is to raise the suit. Um, now why not raise the suit immediately? You might be wondering, and that's because of the emphasis of bidding minor suits versus major suits. 
Uh, minor suits require more points for that game bonus contract, which is a lot harder to do. Um, and also, when partner opens one of a minor, um, a lot of the times, um, if they're too suited, um, you might potentially miss a secondary fit um, in a harder spade suit, which is a bonus a level lower, um, which is useful. So because our job is support, um, we want we want to support partner in their problem suits, and supporting partner in potential problem suits actually takes priority over initially raising partner's minor suits. Um, and we'll, we'll see that a little bit later um, in future lessons. And, and, and the point of that is, um, is because like, like let's say partner opens a club, okay? And I'm thinking about raising two clubs. Um, the idea is if I respond like a heart first, okay, it goes like a club, a heart. Um, the idea is, let's say partner reads, reads one no. The idea is often I can still raise at the same level later. Like like because we save space of a cheap one level bid, like, like often you can get to the same bid um, a lot of the time later in the auction anyway. So there's like no rush to jump to immediate support with a minor. Um, like there is in some other situations. Um, so our priority with responding to minors is, is very much major oriented. Um, so what if you can't raise um, and you don't have a four card major? Um, this is where it gets a little tricky. So if partner opens a club, you can easily rebid a diamond. Um, because a club of diamonds, simple one level rebids don't promise points. Um, but we talked about this weird two over one convention. Um, a diamond, two clubs. We talked about in the modern style that shows game forcing values. Um, a club, two diamonds. So we'll get into that in a future lesson. Um, but essentially, you need you need uh, you need to meet the minimum point requirement. So for a club of diamond, um, if you don't have a four card major and you can't raise partners minor, um, you can you can cheaply bid diamonds. Um, but for clubs, there's this exception because you need points to raise. You need extra points um, to to bid simple new clubs over a diamond in the modern style. So that leads us to our last bid, which is the natural no trump bid. So. Guess what? If you don't have a four card major, you don't have four you don't have four cards for partner. Okay. You don't have four card support for partner. Or five card support. You need five card support to raise a minor. Because so to raise a fit, you want eight you want a guarantee basically that on average you have eight you have at least eight cards. Eight cards is the minimum length together with partner for a fit. So if partner promises three, we need generally five cards to raise a minor. Um the partner often has four, so sometimes you make a four card raise, um, but that's maybe a little bit more advanced. Uh, and sometimes you often have a, lot, a few options if you have four card support for partner. So we, we consider five card support kind of the minimum for a, a true raise of partner suit. Um, so if you can't raise partner, if you don't have a four card suit of your own to introduce, um, remember like you know these don't these don't say anything about our shape. So, like, four-card majors are very common if you're balanced or unbalanced. Like, most hands um, of any shape will have a four-card suit of some kind. So, um, so if you're stuck with everything else, you tend to bid one no trump. Um, this tends to be pretty balanced without four hearts and without five cards or partner. Um, the one exception is a diamond, um, a diamond one no. Um, you know, you might, you might actually have, you could have five or six clubs on a rare occasion because you didn't have the requisite points to bid two clubs. Um, but a lot of the times you will be, pr you will be pretty near a balanced shape um, because we've taken out so many of these other hands for these other four priorities. Um, so hopefully that kind of makes sense. We cover that. Um, I think we can start to think about some examples now. Um, so let's go through some auctions. So let's go through the common examples. So we're, we're going to talk about a club, a club, a new suit, a club, dot. We're going to talk about a minor new suit, a minor raise, and a minor no trump. And let's think about what those show specifically. So how about a minor one major? So we're deleting this because for now. Because I messed it up and we saw that. Um, so what do you do with this type of hand in a bust? Well, we're going to pass. So, so we're going to basically figure out if this is forcing or not. Um, we're going to figure it out by breaking it down um, by these different point ranges and what we would do with the shape based on that checklist. So if we have a bust in this hand shape, um, four card major, um, we're going to pass because that's priority one. Uh, how about with constructive hand? Well, this rule said 
just said just kind of required six or more coins. So we can bid that we can bid a simple new major with a constructive hand. <clears throat> what about an invitational hand? Well, same thing. This just said six or more points, so we can bid a major. And what about with a really good game forcing hand? What's our priority? Um, well, again, there was an point minimum on this, so we can bid a major. So our chart is looking like this. So we can pass, and then a hand of any strength with constructive values or more is going to bid a major. So do we think this bid is forcing or non-forcing? I'll give you a sec to think about it. Okay, good. So you probably figured out at this point, uh, a minor, one major, is a forcing bid. Partner can't pass it, um, which makes sense with the earlier lesson. Um, hope, so hopefully this makes a little more sense now, breaking it down by these rules. Um, it all kind of starts to fit together. How about a minor raise? Um, so we don't, we can't raise, we can't bid a new major, but we have support for partner. So what do we do with this hand in a bust? Well, we probably pass. So we always pass with a bust. How about a constructive hand? Um, what's, so now we're thinking about, you know, you notice raise doesn't actually say how high. So we, ha we haven't actually talked about jumping in a suit yet. So think about how are you going to raise with these different levels of strength? Like, what's that going to look like? Do you have any idea? So I'll give you a sec to think about that. Okay, you can pause me if you need more time. Um, so essentially, if we're raising a suit... Um, these actually are going to be in a category of non-forcing hands, if you remember from the lecture earlier, and it's because if you find a fit, you know, partner doesn't necessarily need to bid new suits, because you found that fit, and we often don't want to get too high. So we actually jump, we haven't talked about jumping in a suit, but we do jump with, with fits, okay? So with the simple hand, we, we bid, um, we make the simple raise, like we've always, we've talked about, we talk about we don't normally jump. But if you, if you start to have these better hands, you jump one extra level for the type of hand you have. So if you're one level higher than constructive, invitational, you can jump to three diamonds to show an invitational hand. And if you have extra values, you can jump one more than three diamonds, four diamonds, or straight to the, the scoring bonus, which is at five diamonds. So, um, so when you're raising a suit, you actually just jump in the suit bid. So, so each, each level, each, each potential level you could raise the suit till shows a different strength. So really we can pass. Can simp simple values make the simple raise? Invitational values make a double raise. And game forcing or better values make the triple raise or higher. They, they can just jump to the final contract. Um, so how about responding to Notrum? And responding in other minors. So a club of diamond is actually going to be the same logic as a club of major, um, which we covered earlier. So it's going to be forcing, and it's going to be natural, and it's on, and it's unlimited, and you do it. With, you can't really jump in a new major um, because you want you want to find room to flag fit, and so you, and so majors have to be forcing so you can find fit. Um, so that's going to look like that. Um, we'll talk about two over one bids in the next lesson. Don't worry too much about. On um, a diamond two clubs, but essentially because it's game forcing, um, your auction is going to be pretty nice after that because you and partner know neither of you can pass below a scoring bonus. Um, so things tend to work out nicely. Um, so not only is it forcing, it, it's even it's even nicer than just being forcing because you know you know you know you can cater to several extra rounds of bidding now, which is awesome. Um, how about no trump these no trump bids? Um, so no trump bids, because they're pretty natural-ish, right, they deny a lot of things, they're very descriptive, no trump, because you've denied three other hand types. You don't have a four card major, you don't have support, um, you don't have other minor, um, of a certain point range, and so there's very little hands left. So these are descriptive bids. Descriptive bids tend to fall in the category of non-forcing. So this is going to work pretty similarly, um, to raising the minor. Um, except we're just not we're we're showing we're showing a descriptive bid, so we're we're balanced ish, um, and and have I guess you know balanced ish hands actually tend to have tolerance for partner suit most of the time, um, and we can describe them in the different point ranges by jumping, so simple response minimum, jump response invitational, double jump is to the scoring bonus at three no is game forcing.
um, since we're thinking about those hands. So here's our favorite chart from the beginning of the lesson, or middle of the lesson, whatever it was. Um, if we fill out all these bids now, damn it, this keeps reformatting really weirdly, I'm sorry. I, like, fixed this earlier, and it still refuses to behave. Perfect. All right. So, new suits are f at least forcing a round. And at the one level, they're constructive values. Um, for the weird case of the diamond two clubs, this is the two over one gadget that we'll learn in a future lesson. All you need to know is that because you're taking up a lot more room with a two level rebid, um, you're forcing a game. I mean, the reason for that is is new suits at the two level um, accelerate the auction a lot faster than new suits at the one level, because suddenly when partner bids a new suit, you're already you're already almost at the game bonus, and so you want firm extra values um, before bidding them. Um, so that's why in the modern style these are game forcing. We talked about the weekends, ironically non forcing, um, which you might not have thought about, but you're passing. So like, um, a diamond might be the final contract. So this is in the non forcing categories. And shows the bust range. Um, and then we have all these other non-forcing bids um, in the same family. We have raises, um, which jump according to their strength. Um, we have balanced hands, which we have no trump hands, usually balanced-ish, that jump according to the range. Um, and so now you know how to respond to one of a minor. Um, do I give... So for a recap, um, again, jumping to... Um, the next lesson a little bit. So concepts we covered today were um, kind of how kind of the major emphasis focus in responding to a club of diamond, um, and kind of the priorities of first showing a major, then raising, then bidding no trump. <clears throat> we covered this principle of forcing and unforcing, and you now understand um, these different ranges of thinking about your hand is responding and how these correspond on uh, two different potential bids. Um, and then in the first episode that we covered, we talked about our five basic openings and kind of your strategy of how you open them and plan your rebids and how to think about this concept of bounds versus unbounds. Um, so I know this episode was a lot. Um, thanks for sticking with me. Um, again, practice, practice, practice is always the key. Have a good partner to work with. Um, Practice on, you know, websites like Tricky Bridge. Um, you're getting to the point where you can almost probably just wing it, practicing with like a robot partner. Um, definitely by the end of the next lesson, because the next lesson we're going to cover one major responses and and start to get to one no. And you're getting really close to where you can kind of put it all together, um, you know, and just wing it and kind of get more of a sense. Um, we did have a lot of examples in the slide. It was very theoretical um today's lesson but hopefully conceptually it kind of helps you put these things in the buckets um and you're kind of you know it's learning a language you're kind of understand these tools for communicating and hopefully it helps you make it more successful so i'd say for like um again breaking it down by skill level for my beginner players um i want you to focus on this concept of forcing versus non-forcing and how do i think about these different levels of strength um for my intermediate players um hopefully this helps like give you a better sense of i guess planning out your initial rebids like some of you will pro probably have some idea of this initial two over one rebid and hopefully it kind of makes sense like hopefully that that breakdown of like the priority checklist um like this hopefully like that kind of thing helped you start to conceptualize i know this is probably a little simplified from what you know like with game forcing values or better, um, actually your priority is maybe to bid your longer suit before a four card major. Um, that's something that I may have like skipped over for simplicity. Um, but you can start to think about like in your system, like of bids you've learned, like how do they fit in these categories? Um, like I challenge you to think about every bit of your system, like break it down by this, like like what are different ranges? Are they forcing or non forcing? Like how can I conceptualize different bids in my system? So hopefully this is like some tools to help you understand your own bidding system a little bit more and, and what your agreements are with your regular partners and like what differences may arise and how can I discuss it. Um, so hopefully this is a useful little lesson. Um, again, talking about a lot of concepts. Um, if anyone ever wants to talk to me about these lessons, um, 
because I'm doing them at random intervals. Um, feel free to email me at my email address that's listed in the no in the show notes. Um, if you have any questions or looking for lessons or what have you, or want to just you know, you anyone's free to grill me on simple questions on anything in this content. Like, I'm happy to do that uh, on my own time for you know. Um, I, I love talking about bridge in my discord or whatever. So I'm always happy to answer simple questions, um, for viewers that have them. So hopefully this is helpful. Um, and hopefully this helps a little bit. So till next time, um, when we cover one major openings, um, so thanks everyone and take care.